Inspiration can come from many places and today I'm using packaging to inspire my card. There are many ways that we can be inspired to create our cards and packaging or designs like fabrics or magazine advertisements are always a great option if you're lost for mojo. Now I've already used this beautiful packaging once before to create a card and I thought I'd take it a step further today and create an interactive card with you and just walk you through the process. So when I looked at the packaging I saw obviously the colours. I was inspired by the way that the colours were mixed together and actually I was also inspired by the flowers themselves. So I made sure to choose an image that was similar to the one on the packaging and then I'm going to flow this theme throughout. This is a big card. It's actually an A5 card that I'm making, like half of an A4 sheet. So it's quite a large card for me. It's for a very good friend of mine and her 50th birthday. And I did a bit of a prototype using this packaging on a live and I will link that in the description below. If you want to see another card that I made inspired by this same packaging, I have got the dies for the floral set that I'm going to be using and basically I've just laid them including the leaf dies on the front of the card just to give me a rough idea of how my layout's going to be. So I'm going to batch this out to make it easier and I'm starting off with the stamping and die cutting getting all my images ready. So in true form to the packaging itself I decided this time that I would actually do some gold heat embossing on the colored cardstock. So all of these colors I sort of chose just by holding them up near the packaging and just seeing if they kind of worked together when I held them up against each other and they look really pretty together. I will have all of the colors that I've used and products that I've used listed in the description below as well as at my blog post. So if you do have any questions don't hesitate to ask. But basically I cut out a ton of flowers <laughs> and leaves. Now initially I cut out some white leaves but you'll see that will change up um, shortly. The next thing I wanted to do was choose some gold cardstock that I thought would go with this particular. This is the antique gold embossing powder from Alton New and it's a beautiful gold embossing powder and I find with a lot of golds that they do leave like a residual kind of dust look on the card and this one doesn't so it's my go-to for sure. I wanted to add the number 50 so I used some of the brushed gold cardstock and the antique gold glitter cardstock from Alton New. Here's a pro tip if you are stamping colored ink on colored cardstock Test it on a scrap piece of paper first because that's going to let you know exactly what it's going to look like once it's dry and you won't be disappointed. And something a little bit different for me today again is I'm using coloured cardstock here for my card base. I think this is the poppy colour from Concord and Ninth. I've already folded it over because I want to do my stamping. When you're creating interactive cards you really do need to do things in stages so that they don't interfere with the next stage. Like if I had have already put some die cut pieces in here I wouldn't be able to stamp it so neatly because it is such a large piece of cardstock. There's always ways around things but to make it easier I decided to do my stamping on the outside and also on the inside here. I've added this sentiment on the inside now before I do any more work on the card front and I did also come in and add a piece of colored cardstock on the inside of the front of the card just to give it a two-tone look in the center. I thought that looked really modern and funky. Another tip that I've got for you here is to layer up your die cuts especially if you're going to pop them up on some fun foam so that, that that way they just have a little bit more stability and they won't crush quite so easily. I've also layered up this ampersand from Altenew. I think it's about three or four layers thick and the top layer is actually an ivory cardstock. Then I've come in with the nectar cardstock and I've actually just cut the lower portion of the ampersand and I'm adhering that directly to the die cut. I think it looks fabulous. 
And I'm going to do the same thing with the number 50. And I want to make sure that they're the same size. So it's hard to tell here, but I've actually cut one, lay it on top and then cut the second one. Now, like I said, this is going to be interactive. So I've cut a piece of scrap cardstock. It's the same color as the inside of the card. Doesn't really matter what width it's going to be as long as it's big enough to hold the flower or whatever you're going to put on the inside. I've scored it five times at the half inch mark and cut the end off on the fifth score and then rolled it into four and adhered it together. This is going to be my interactive piece to make the flowers pop up in the middle of the card. So I've actually held the flowers in place here and worked out where everything's going to go. Then I like to use liquid glue to adhere all my pieces to the inside of the card and along the center score line of the card because I know it's going to hold. It's a really strong glue. You could also use a really strong tape if you've got one. I'm also adhering all my flowers with the liquid glue and I decided to come in with some gold leaves. So I did these out of the brushed gold cardstock as well. I thought they looked really pretty together. When you're doing pop-up cards like this, you want to make sure that you only really have one element that's popping up. So the flowers that I've put in the background here are all going to be added directly to the card base on the inside here. That way they're not going to interfere with the pop-up mechanisms or the flowers that are popping up. And you might also notice that I've got the flowers adjacent to each other. They're not crossing over that midline of the card. That way when the card folds shut, they will fold shut with the card. Then all I did was use the rest of the flowers to decorate the front of the card like I originally intended. I did add some dimension here. I knew I was going to be gifting this card because I was at the party. <laughs> so I wasn't worried about postage. But you could certainly post it in a rigid mailer or if you weren't going to hand gift it or I would just make sure to add um, a nice solid piece of cardstock around it if you are going to put it through the post. So like I said there are lots of layers here. I've used liquid glue to make sure everything's going to hold in place. I did add a little bit of gold bling. So back to the packaging now and I want to know do you think I have met the inspiration here. I know I love these colors together and you know the other thing is I'd really like to make one of these gift bags. I think I'm going to have to get it back offer. <laughs> and the earrings too they were pretty. No I wouldn't do that. And let me know in the description below if you like today's card and if you've been inspired by something like packaging, a piece of art or maybe some fabric. And I've linked a couple more videos here, including the live video that I made with the first card from this packaging. And I look forward to seeing you there. And don't forget to click the like button and subscribe if you haven't. I look forward to seeing you back here real soon. Till next time, happy paper crafting. Bye.